Hi there, and welcome to our Demexco session, Ethical IA Meets Privacy, Avoid the Paparazzi Effect. My name is Steven Hoffmans, and I'm a customer experience advisor working for SaaS Institute, and I will be the host for this session. Today for me is a very exciting day because we're going to talk about ethical artificial intelligence meeting privacy. During this session, we will discuss ethical approaches to take up to protect your brand and how you as a company can organize yourself to ensure ethical AI. To do this, I have invited an expert in the field of ethics and artificial intelligence, Mieke de Ketelaar. Mieke is the Program Director AI at IMEC ID Lab, and Mieke has specialized in robotics and artificial intelligence during her studies. Over the last 25 years, she's worked for several multinationals on all aspects of data and analytics. At IMEC, she's responsible for the development and the rollout of the AI strategy. Miki is also a frequently asked keynote speaker on the topics of digitalization, demystifying AI, and data privacy, and also a best-selling author with her book, Wanted AI Translators. Thanks for joining this session, Miki. Thank you very much for having me. So let's start with the title of this session, Miki. Um, what has ethics, AI, privacy to do with paparazzi? Should consumers realize that everything they are doing is being monitored? Well, I think at least we should take our responsibility. Um, you need to know that if we go back in time, that AI was basically an academic discipline where somebody was entering the data, the algorithm was you know, doing uh, some, creating some insights, and the, the person behind the computer was translating these insights to whoever was in, in concerned. In the meantime, we've automated this whole process. So, you know, digitalization, the arrival of the internet, created a lot of new digital streams where, which are automatically entered into the algorithms and algorithms are automatically spitting out an answer which is automatically being proposed in one or the other way to the consumer. That means that um, there is, in a lot of case, uh, situations, no human in the loop anymore. Um, that creates a challenge because AI becomes an invisible technology. We all love, technologists are not, we all love our new apps, our, our smartphones, our, our smart sensors, etc. But things are being decided for us without us knowing what's behind. Um, and I think the fact that this is such an invisible technology uh, that is now having an impact in our lives, um, that this is a danger if we are not make, making it more transparent. If I compare it, which I do a lot with food and medication, we we know that food and medication before were less transparent as well. And we created rules and regulations around it. We created leaflets with information about what's in there, how long, uh, how do you have to consume it? You now, um, what do you have to do or who to call when things go wrong? That's not there yet for AI. So AI is technology that creates an impact in our lives. It can change co consumer behavior. However, it's invisible. And so, yes, is the answer to your question. People need to be at least aware about it. And we need to be more transparent where it's used, how it's used, and what the impact is, just like we do with food and medication. And for me as a consumer, it's really about um, understanding then why a certain decision is taken for me or why, for example, a certain product is shown for me. Being able to understand that, why a company proposed that, that's what you think is, is crucial to understand as a consumer. Well, at least I compare it also to, you know, a microwave. We all use microwave. Do we know the exact physics behind it? No, we no, don't. don't think... But we know how to use it. We know what's dangerous with it. We know how to, you know, what we should do and what we should do. That's the same with our AI solutions. We should be now to a certain level of detail, how it works, what it does, and what we can do in order to avoid certain dangers. Okay, and 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 looking. Um... Looking at it from an organizational point of view, um, you've been working 25 years in, the, in this space. When was for you the first time you encountered, uh, you encountered that you needed to be vigilant towards consumers, um, where there were potential, ethic, potential ethical related reactions from consumers that you need to be aware of, and that you said, you know, look, we need to think about this AI algorithm, and we need to look um, at uh, how consumers are going to react. What was your first interaction? Um, That's a very good question. Um, 
And in fact, you know, being a technologist myself, uh, I get excited with, uh, you know, data and new technologies all the time. However, there are limitations to it. And uh, for a very long time, I found it very inspirational um, uh, when, when I went online and, you know, but, you know, some emails were just put into my spam filter. I thought it was very, very good. It was very good value. When things were personalized for me on a website, it was very good. I found it very relevant. But people started to overdo it, uh, overdo this. And as soon as I clicked on some image on the internet, the whole rest of the website was was changed, or sometimes even pricing was changed. And then this this limitation uh, or this this uh, um, slider between an inspiration or an irritation becomes very you know, personal. So where do I put the slider? Do I have the right to put the slider myself? Or is this company with my data that I leave behind going to put a slider for me? So when I started seeing some companies that were overdoing it, trying to force themselves into, you know, too far in that personalization, there they lost me. And I thought, well, this is just irritational. I want to switch the whole thing off. And I wasn't able to do so. Oh, and there, there you have the link also with the paparazzi. Actually, that um, some companies started to use your data and 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 following you every uh, everywhere around on the websites and all the on on all the customer touch points you could potentially have. And today, there is no way as a consumer that you say I want to switch that off. Is or is that incorrect? No, that's absolutely correct. Um, you see very much, if you look into it, you see very much on what basis they make a certain decision. And we shouldn't be feeling this. You know, this should be smoothly done. Um, and so, and indeed, paparazzi is, is like having the feeling when you're driving your car that you have also, you know, the, the police behind you, um, you know, following. That gives you an unease feeling. You know, you're at unease when you're sitting in your car, you're looking behind you. What does he want? What does he want? This is sometimes the feeling I'm getting when I'm now interacting with technology is that I see that somebody's overviewing me, somebody's watching me, and they were just hunger, their hunger for information and in order to use the next uh, you know, interaction uh, with me. I, I don't like this. It's, you know, sometimes I just want to be free. I, I, want to, I want to decide myself what I want to look for, etc. So I think we've overdone a little bit on the data and the technology, and we haven't looked enough at the customer experience side from the whole um, you know, setup. And, and as, a, as a consumer, do I? Do I own the data? Is it so the data that an organization collects about me? Do I own that data? What are what are actually my rights when as a consumer? Well, you have to know that originally in '93, when the World Wide Web was created, um, that was supposed to be a decentralized setup in order to connect people worldwide with each other. Over time, and we're jumping a couple of years, that became a very centralized. Uh, a setup. You know, we were, you know, we were just as an end consumer, we were just delivering the data. We were just, you know, taking away our rights to, the, uh, you know, to do something actively ourselves. And this data was going through these big platforms without calling out the names. We all know them. Who were just starting to see this data as the new gold, as you know, as the new energy, and, and all the terms that are given to it. Because they understood if we have this data, we can see these. You know, we can do smart things with it. And we are going to make decisions with it for this consumer. So we actually are no longer their customer. Their customers are the big advertisers, etc. And so, yes, at the moment we are in a, in a centralized setup, and it's not nice for the consumer. So we are moving now towards a decentralized setup. Where we are going to go back to the principles of '93, where we say the internet is of everybody, and we should create solutions. We should should create approaches where data belongs to the person who is creating it, if it's a company or if it's a consumer, uh, because we both create data. And it's up to us to then define who and in what conditions, under which circumstances, our data can be used. We will define in the future more and more ourselves how the other party who is wanting to use this fuel, how he wants to use our gold, how he can do so, and what we want to have in return. And, and the way I understand it, that if, if we decentralize, I become owner of my data. And that should practically be the fact that I can take a retail, all my retail data, I can, from, from a specific um, retail store, I, I would be able to get that and then share that, for example, with my telco provider who can maybe do them, a, give me a better customer service or to a bank who who can give me a better loan. So, so 
I see opportunity, the, the way you describe it, I haven't thought about it. The way you describe it is I see new opportunities also for companies that if they start sharing data between organizations, that there are new kind of services that could pop up that deliver a better customer experience and a, central, a more centralized customer experience than what they are offering today. Yeah, and absolutely, and that's the key, is you have to start from your customer experience point of view. You know, if a company doesn't have customers, you don't have, you're not in business, you're out of business. So that's the end state in mind that you need to have customer experience. We all know that um, companies are not differentiating themselves no longer on products or on pricing, but on the on the services that they are giving with it. You know, you see this in the energy sector, you see this in a bank, you see this in basically in all sectors we, we're in. And so the person or the company who is going to be able to create these best services or is going to win the competition. Um, now, if you start this from a customer experience point in mind, and then you go backwards in time and you see what data do, that, do I need in order to provide these services, indeed, you might be willing to have additional data that what, what you currently have. You know, that's the data monetization platforms here in Belgium. We see big telcos going together with banks. We see retailers going together with telcos, etc. All trying to understand how this other piece of information in the puzzle could be interesting for them in order to create better services to their customers. And that's the world where we're going to go to in, uh, move into right now. And and when I look at that from with this knowledge, when I look at that from an organizational perspective, right, it seems like ethical conversations with your customers and, and making sure your customers are happy are becoming crucial because they take their your competitive data actually elsewhere then. How do you organize yourself from a company perspective for ethical AI conversations? Well, ethics is of course a very heavy word. Huh? Um, I would just make it a bit more specific. I would call it, you know, fate, creating fate and fate is fairness. Um, accountability, transparency, and explainability. So as a company, you need to take these four keywords in, uh, into consideration when you're going to tackle um, you know, customer experience of the future. Um, fairness means is you're no longer going to put only engineers and data scientists around your algorithms. You're going to extend your team in a multidisciplinary way with sociologists, uh, with psychologists, etc who can look at to, into customer experience more from you know, a broader sense. You know, is this an ethical decision? Uh, is this a fair decision we're making with this algorithm? That's one point. Accountability is that as a business, you're also going to exp, you know, show where you are going to be using which algorithm. At the moment, as mentioned in the start of this conversation, it's a hidden technology. Well, we should, as an end consumer, we should claim to at least know where this technology is used. I mean, it starts already now with, with the cookies where we can decide, but it should go and be extended. And we should be able to see where our algorithms used in, uh, in decision taking. Explainability is also a very important point. When a decision is made, we should be able to understand, not in a formula, not with alphas and betas, but in a very understandable language, why a certain decision was made uh, based on our data. So all these points, companies have to take ownership of, and customers are going to be more and more aware that um, if their data is shared, if the algorithms are being used of, uh, on this data, is um, that they are, have the ability to define, yes, you can continue to use my data, or no, here stops our collaboration, and I'm going to look for your competition, because they have other principles. I think that's a, um, a very good uh, remark. Uh, my second question would be then, how do you define uh, a fair value exchange as a consumer? Hey, I'm on the consumer side, I'm sharing my data, and I want to have fair exchanges between hey, me giving my data to a company. What, 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 is, what, what is fair for a consumer to ask and expect from an organization? Yeah, and, and that's probably one of the most challenging uh, letters in the faith word is fair. What is fair? Because something that's fair here in Belgium is not fair on the other side of the ocean. Uh, fairness is one of the most difficult ones to, to identify. But again, I, when you start from a customer experience point of view, sitting together with your customers and understanding what they define as fair uh, and making sure that you tune your algorithms, you even retrain your algorithms into an uh, 
you know, what the definition of fair was, um, you know, what was given as an answer to the definition of fairness um, is something that's very important to do. Um, of course, giving an answer here with all the flavors of algorithms that we have out there is difficult to do, but fairness, something you need to know is that fairness is a context specific uh, question that you need to ask. So uh, if you're going to define fairness, we have to make the effort to look and listen to our local customers where the algorithm or where the solution is going to be used. And we will see that the answer on the fairness question will differentiate from country to country, from region to region, and companies have to adapt their solutions to that. So fair value exchange for consumers, but the way you describe it, Mieke, is, 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 is ethical AI something for only the data and analytics manager and their team, or is it something that actually goes through the whole organization? Well, I think, um, as you could slightly hear in my answers, it's a multidisciplinary debate. So it is something that the whole organization needs to uh, take up. Um, AI is no longer something that happens in a small department somewhere in, uh, in IT or you know, a little team in marketing. AI becomes more and more a strategy that needs to be uh, entered into the DNA of the company. So defining fairness um, uh, or defining ethical AI for what it means to your company needs to be coming top down. You know, the CEO, C-level needs to be involved and it needs to be filtering through the whole organization. Absolutely. So it's part of the mission, the vision, the board and every interaction you have with a customer within your organization, everything should go through the lens of ethical AI. Yes, indeed. And what you see is that uh, companies that do a very good job in that level, they have an ethical AI board on, and you see that multiple uh, people are sitting around the board, non on, not only technical people, but also people from the business, you know, sales departments, marketing departments, but also people from HR uh, are sitting around the table. And all together, when a new solution is going to be implemented, they define, you know, on what context, in what situation, under which conditions the, such, the uh, solution can be activated. And I've seen many solutions that cannot be activated because one of the shareholders around the table says no go because of a certain reason that the others didn't think about. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. What would you, to wrap up everything, what would you advise companies that are starting their AI ethics journey? Where should you start? Should you start internally? Should you immediately start targeting customers? Should you define a framework first? What, what do you do? I'm at the start of my journey. What, what, what should I do? Well, there's, especially from, it in, from a customer experience point of view, there's two uh, actions to take. Um, first of all, internally, you need to speak the same language. Um, I see far too often that uh, civil level want to do AI. Um, you know, they have picked it up somewhere in the press or they have picked it up at the competitor, but they actually don't know what it is. So I think first step to take is make sure that um, just like with my uh, microwave is that you know all of who are going to be implicated, that you have a certain knowledge of how AI works fact that it's a context depending, the fact that it's not rule based, but it will just change uh, over time, etc. is very an important point. Um, make sure you get the same level of knowledge uh, so you can talk and you can understand each other. That's the first point internally. Um, you know, it's, it's a tool. It's not something you believe in or don't believe in. It needs to work. It's a tool and you sit around the table. Externally, I think it's your customer out there who will tell you uh, what they're expecting from you, what's for them you know, relevant, what are they willing to give you from data in order to you know, be inspired with your service or with your goods. This answer, I see far too often companies are thinking it, uh, you know, thinking about it internally. They say, well, we have here, you know, we have a product or we have uh, we have put a, created a segmentation, etc. And then they're going to push it out to it. And then they see that the world out there is more complex than what they intended to have uh, in their internal analysis. I keep telling companies the answer is outside. The answer is with your customers. Go and talk with your customers. Go through your own customer journey. Don't try to invent it. I mean, it's out there. Go and pick up that information, bring it inside, and then uh, start from there. Uh, last point maybe on this is that you always start from a challenge. You know, the technology and the data, uh, in, you know, that's, that's been proven that it works. You know, you just need to trust it. There's many, many good examples of the value that AI can bring into its contexts. But, you know, just saying I have data 
and now have a technology isn't good enough. You start with a challenge and it's a challenge you're going to solve. And this is, you know, something your customers out there will tell you. Um, and so these are my two tasks. External one, bring external life into the company and then internally speak the same language. Sit around the table. You will see that it's bigger challenge than you can imagine. But this is a task that's very much still open in many companies. Oh, great. Thanks, you. I, I learned really a lot today during this session, uh, Mieke, and I hope the audience too. Um, feel free to post any questions you have in the chat. Uh, we will be happy to answer them and hopefully meet you all soon. Have a nice day. Goodbye.